The gold standard for diagnosing cystic fibrosis is called the sweat test. Now, it's not where you have to exercise a lot and sweat a lot, but the sweat is used to analyze how much chloride is in there. So the point of this whole test is how much chloride. And an abnormally high chloride points to cystic fibrosis. A lot of times this test is done in babies. And for full-term babies, actually uh, age two to four weeks, you can already have an accurate test. And the reason why they might get one or the doctor might order one is, for example, if they have a genetic reason to maybe have CF, if their parents carry the gene, or they could have an abnormal newborn screen. Now, every baby who's born in the hospital gets a newborn screen. It tests for metabolic factors, things that can potentially point to CF. And if they have something abnormal in there, they usually get the sweat test. So it's a test that we do if we suspect CF. And the way it's done is actually very simple. The baby or the person doesn't really even have to move. So first we apply a solution to the skin, wherever the area we're testing, which encourages it to make sweat. And then we take two electrodes, one positive, one negative, positive and negative. We put it on the skin, turn on the current, and this current stimulates the sweat gland. So if this is the skin, back here is the sweat gland. So after it's stimulated to make sweat, we then collect it, send it to the lab, and see how much chloride there is. That is the sweat test. Of course, you can always go for genetic testing right to the source of the gene. Where do you know what the gene is? And remember, it's CFTCR. Thing to remember about this is that uh, even though this is the gene that causes the disease, there are many variations between normal people, between people who have CF, who have different variants of it. So it's not always as cut and dry. But for the most part, analyzing this gene and seeing if it's normal can diagnose the CF. The sweat test and genetic testing are more or less answering a yes or no question. But to ask that question at the appropriate time, there are diagnostic clues that we should look for in people who might not know that they have CF. So for people who work with kids, um, when they're even just babies, it's important to watch out for people who have failure to thrive. Failure to thrive, which just means they're not gaining weight and growing as they should. And the first thing you do is make sure the parents are feeding them correctly. But after that, you start looking for uh, what we call organic causes or what's within the baby's metabolism that causes this. And CF is a big one. So failure to thrive, maybe it's good to do a sweat test or people who are having a lot of frequent lung infections, especially with um, bacteria or organisms that are not usually found in normal people. For example, Pseudomonas. This is something that thrives in the environment of the thick mucus that cystic fibrosis, fibrosis patients have in their lungs. So this is something, a type of pneumonia that's seen in a lot of CF patients, but not necessarily in people who don't have it. So this again should tip you off to look for the CF. Of course, there's malnourishment, malnutrition, I should say, because they can eat all the food in the world, but if CS stops their pancreas from helping them digest it, then they will have malnutrition. You can get things like a chest x-ray if you want to see the overinflated lungs. You can get an abdominal x-ray in babies because they have, CF can affect the intestines, and sometimes that's visible on the film. But one thing, actually speaking of babies, that I want to point out is to watch out for babies who have delayed meconium. Meconium. Not to gross you out, but meconium is the brown sludge that comes out of a baby when they're first born. It's kind of like their first poop, but it's not real poop because they haven't eaten yet. But if the sludge doesn't come out, there are several reasons that could be, and CF is one of the major reasons. So working with newborns, if they don't have, if they don't pass meconium within the first few hours, like normal babies do, it's worth it to look into that further and see if they could possibly have cystic fibrosis. Diagnosing CF is not really a huge mystery because we know the gene, we know the sweat test has a good accuracy. So the key in cystic fibrosis diagnosis is to watch out for these clues and think of CF when you see them.